we are discussing the quad trees and quad trees implementation the content is taken from this website so the implementation this is a view of your quad tree so quad trees are 2d data structure please understand they are 2d data structures useful for efficient representation of 2d data such as images and look up in a 2d space uh, in this uh, content we focus on the implementation of these quad trees that represents 2d data efficiently that is where quad trees can be used to compress data also although these quad trees can be used in variety of data types uh, we will try to focus on the color data that is the images in this content and then we will look at more general application like uh, occupancy maps and force fields and we also look at the properties of data that determines whether it is suitable to represent a quad tree or as a quad tree or not so quad tree take advantage of the fact that these cells in a grid are often the same as adjacent cells for example a green pixel is very likely surrounded by other green pixels so we do not need a data point for every pixels as we do when we use a grid so we can use a single point for an entire section of the grid let us see the example or pictorial example of tree representation this is your original image now how can you represent it using a quad tree these four are equivalent these four are equivalent so these can be combined this is a quad tree representation of the image again the quad tree representation with the higher tolerance value you can combine these these also if you have a higher higher tolerance value this is the representation in the form of tree actual tree so this is your node and as i said in the previous one this diagram this one you have four partitions these four partitions this one and this one is already done this will again be divided into four this will again be divided into four and with higher tolerance will combine these so the tree will only have four partitions like this so let us see them in detail this right one you just saw has four with higher higher tolerance value well here you have two which which were having actual equal colors but the four the two partition where we we made four more partition uh, for more northwest northeast southwest southeast four sub trees the representation is like this so then let us take uh, the example on a photograph just uh, take this photograph so when we try to take a quad tree we can make a quad tree out of it and you see this these area can be can be represented just by one one value right so to implement a quad tree we have to have five things first we need to define a quad tree class define a node class implement a detailed measuring function and implement a construction algorithm and implement an access algorithm so the construction or making a tree and then accessing from a tree so we'll take them one by one how to define the quad tree class this class is quite simple it stores the root node and the algorithm which was explained just now which which, are, which we are going to talk about so it is to how that would look say in java some programming language so this will be class quad tree we have a node called root and this is the quad tree which is our constructor and we have a color get index get y we are dealing with the color so let us take this color as one of the one of the class one of the class function then how to define the node class the node class is where most of the work is done it should store the four children possibly uh, all null and the start and be able to handle construction and access functions like this you have a class node which we just saw in your uh, previous class which, which we have made as a quad tree inside that you have seen a node so that node which is a class node this class node has children and of course we know there are four children of course so in int x y width height this node will have grid which grid value we are talking about int x y and the width and height so width and height width height the grid and of course the node this is the constructor which takes all this value and the color because we are dealing with just an example of a color image that is why we are taking color get get function then detail measure algorithm this algorithm calculates the amount of detail on a rectangle of the grid how that detail is measured depends on the application for for example images the average manhattan distance between colors and the average color is a crude measure that often works well 
Manhattan distance. You know the distances in image processing. These are Man Man Euclidean, Manhattan, and uh, step, step. All these kind of distances are there. So Manhattan distance between two color is simply defined as R1 minus R2. These are all in mod. That is, we'll take the only positives. G1 minus G2, B1 minus B2. This R1 is the red component of the color one, and G is the green component of the color one. B1 is the blue color of the component one, and so on and so forth. So note, you have to note that the entire grid is passed to the logarithm with extra parameters to indicate the boundaries of the piece we actually want to measure. We also define a help function to calculate the average of a rectangle in a grid. What is that? This calculate. This is the average calculating uh, the average color of the rectangular region of a grid. So it calculates the average color of the rectangular region of the grid. So we'll start with the the of course the red, green, blue. So we'll start with zero. And we add the color values of each channel, red, green, blue. And for all these, the area, of course, the number of uh, fixed pixels evaluated is the area within to height. And then we'll try to put an average. So this red sum divided by average is this area, this area, red sum by the area, green sum by the area, and then blue sum by the area. That gives us the average value. So this measures the amount of detail of a rectangular region of a grid. Okay. Then the measuring of detail, the next one. We have just seen how to calculate the average color of the rectangular region of a grid. Now we are going to measure the amount of detail of a rectangular re region of a grid. This is done by this code, this simple example of how we can measure the detail. We have just found out the average, you know that how this function average we have just written and we can calculate the red, green and blue component and we start with the color sum and this calculates the distance between every pixel in the region. And the average color because average has been computed we need to know that how one color is having a distance with the manhattan distance with the average one and uh, then we add the distance so of course we start with the width total image width and height we compute the color sum so we calculate the average distance and return the result and we divide it by three because we are averaging over three channels this is three by area this is how we measure the detail how to construct? So we have a construction algorithm. The construction algorithm can be put in the constructor of the node class itself. So the constructor of the actual quadri class simply construct the root node. The constructor simply construct the root node. The algorithm is simple. The detail is measured over the part of the grid that the node is meant to present. If it is higher than some threshold, the node constructs four children node, each representing a quadrant of the original rectangle. If the detail in the rectangle is lower than the threshold, the average color is calculated for the rectangle and stored in the node. The threshold value passed to the function is often determined empirically. That is, you change it until you get what you want. And obviously, the smart, smaller it is, the more accurate the quadri will represent the original data. And the more memory and processing time, of course, will be used. So, how we can construct a new quadri node from a grid and parameters that would indicate the regions this node is to represent as well as the threshold to use to decide whether to split this node or not. This is a node. These are the inputs with height the threshold. As I said, threshold decides and we do it empirically. So we have x, y, width, height. We measure the detail. You know by now that measure detail, how to compute it and we com compare it with the threshold. Right? Then the color will be given as a, if the details are too little. Otherwise, if we have enough detail to split, we create a children with new node 4. And then this is the children 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is a new node, all together 4 quadrants. So 1 will be divided into 4 quadrants. This is 0, 1, 2, 3, any way you can take. How to access? Now we have to have an access algorithm. To access work, how we are going to access these uh, set tiles or nodes. So if the node from which the method is uh, which is called as a leaf, a node without any children, that node's color is written. If the node from which the method is called is a leaf, simply the node color is written. Otherwise the call is delegated to the child node of the correct quadrant and we'll see the method. This method is going to return whether this node has any children or not. So is leaf. Yes or no? Null. Children is good null. Otherwise, get we get the color at the given pixel location. So color get, we get the return in the color. Otherwise, you decide in which quadrant the pixel lies and delegate the method to the appropriate node. 
this is for one node, this is for another node, like this. So these are the four nodes actually, you know, there are four conditions, one for one, sec, two, three, four. So here we decide which quadrant the pixel is going to be present. So how we can see the real world implementation of this? A typical real world implementation may differ in several aspects from the simple implementation as we discussed above. Integers will be used to represent colors in the raw data and nodes rather than color objects. Intermediate values of uh, colors will be stored as floats where component values are scaled uh, to lie between 0 to 1. And whatever delay detail function is used, its output will be scaled always between 0 to 1. This will make it easier to determine a correct threshold. And adding this several hundred or even thousand red blue color will cause our flow problem. So what we are going to do? The summands are often scaled between the, before they are added. For example, the division by the area can be done before they are added to the sum. And calculating the average is expensive always. So where it is used as a part of the detail measuring algorithm, why not to calculate it separately and pass it to the function so that the value can be reused? What are the debugging tips here? Implement a way to visualize the quad tree even if the quad tree does not represent anything. In addition to the normal visualization, also implement a visualization that would render every square in the different color. Render outlines of blocks for the normal visualization. And also try to implement a visualization of the error of your quad tree representation against the original. And for benchmarking, implement node count methods for counting all nodes, all these nodes. So this is useful to make sure that a quad tree is indeed a more efficient representation of your data. For instance, white noise will be better represented by a grid, say. This is the quad tree image with uh, an actual grid visualization as we saw in the earlier image. So let us see some background and theory about a quad trees. With the revolution of uh, consumer 3D graphic cards, there was a boom in 3D games. Most of these were first uh, person shooters and for a very good reason. The reason is that indoor environments when compared to the outdoor environments are far simpler. And when they create out with these great outdoors, there are no convenient staircases to the next levels or doors or wall blockings you review. So believable outdoor environments go on for miles. The sheer geometry involved is phenomenal and any step to cut this down are welcome. Here enters the quadri. So here we try to uh, present the quadri implementation, how you are going to present and what are the aspects which are related with the quadri implementation and specifically with the images because the image is 2D and the quadri is best for the 2D representation and uh, you cannot apply this uh, hashing etc in this 2D data structure. Thank you so much.